All your mates are coming back. Kieran Marmion, Adj McGinty, was, was he? Yeah, you yeah. Him? yeah. Uh, Jake Heenan. Yeah. So um, this is going to be an interesting one. I mean, John, uh, John Muldoon's here, Joe Joyce. Are they already trying to get you guys wound up, by, you know, just to get one over on where they've been for a long time? Yeah, well, Joycey, anyway, he's... Uh, talk, I can't stand him half the time anyway, so... God knows what he's trying to tell me and the boys, but uh, yeah, I know Moore really well. Uh, yeah, so Moore's obviously looking forward to uh, the game on Friday. Um, we have some familiar faces, like you, like you mentioned, coming to town. Uh, very friendly with a lot of the boys, uh, Pat as well. Um, so it should be good crack uh, for Friday. Not a distraction, is it? No, like you, you play for a good length of time. You're always going to have lads that move on and. You often see them again, the way the, the draws work. So um, I played against friends before and, and people I know before, and um, it's all good. It's just, yeah, it's just business. So, uh, yeah, it'd be good. Business once you get over that white line. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's for my personal thing anyway, be straight business, but I can't speak for the likes of Joycey. He's a bit weird. And like I mentioned there, he'd be... He might be talking and no one will understand him anyway. So, um, so what do you do? Yeah. You just follow him. Is that the best way? If you if you if you're not sure what he's up to, just go. Where yeah. He's going. Well, following Joyce is probably not the best idea. But um, if he looks like he's jumping in the line out, he's going to do something. I'm probably best to stay quite close to him. So um, depends on the context of what he's doing, uh, whether I follow him or not. But uh, he's a uh, he's a good man. So he's probably not too far from Bin Reich. Yeah. Yourself and uh, him were close together when Ole Jaeger ran into you. Yeah, um, that was a unfortunate collision. I uh, hope Ole's doing all good. And um, yeah, it's just you know the nature. Of the games are really physical, and um, obviously some stuff happens, and you know you don't want to ever see anyone nope. you know getting stretched off. It's it's a really nope. tough thing to see for. Do you know, tackle, for, double, yeah. Double tackle like that. Yeah. So no, I hope he's hope he's doing good and um, and yeah. Just looking ahead as well. Um, is how do you handle the situation that you know a big game at the weekend, but you can't play? You're ready to go. You're fully fit. Does but it's minutes and matches and does that get easier as you get more experience? To just you just have to go okay. Yeah. Look, it's a tough one. Um, I suppose I've I've don't think I missed a game since I, I've been back from from island duty and uh, I suppose when you get older you have an awareness that you know you can't play every week even though your your mind might think it's a, a good idea to do it so um, it's rare you do get well it's rare for me anyway I've had a weekend off so when I got the when Pete flagged me and told me that I wasn't be involved just to take the rest of the weekend I understood where he's coming from and the boys in my position have been doing really really well and. Um, so I just took it as a, a week for my own self and to uh, train real hard and, and try and improve on a few things. And then on the weekend, just try and watch the watch the game. And I do find watching the game is quite tough because uh, you're watching things and you kind of wish you were out there. But such is life. And look, we uh, have a big one this Friday and all eyes on that anyway. Certainly is. Jack Ainge has been doing pretty well, I'd say. Yeah, Ainge has been class. Uh, you know, he's... You know, he's scrummaging and around the pitch, he's doing some crazy stuff like intercepts and stuff. I don't think I've ever got one of them in my career. And then uh, he's getting intercepting tries and stuff. It's mad. And then uh, then Dom as well. Dom's been playing really well when he's got a chance of scrummaging really well. And Sammy Lowe as well. So we've got really good depth at, at tight head prop. And certainly for our experience, I suppose, older member in the squad, it's good to have young guys that are really hungry behind you, chomping at the bit. And keeps me pretty grounded and keeps me wanting to improve myself. And all in all, it just helps. Uh, the team with when lads are competing like that and you get it they come to you for advice i suppose the younger guys do but you're all the three of you are pretty serious and sam's a young fella sam's a young fella like in terms of prop years like uh they're all quite young to be fair and we often would sit down you know post like a tuesday tough training session and watch scrums and um you know they do some stuff incredibly well and i'd be looking at what they're doing and taking from that and then it'd be vice versa so uh, we have a really good, you know, there's no egos in, in any of it, not just within the props, but in, within the squad. And I think lads are pretty eager to learn from each other and take all the good bits and then get, they're really good at taking criticism and constructive criticism as well. So it's, uh, it's a healthy group and it's certainly a healthy competition at Tardif. Yeah, it should be a cracking on Friday, whatever you call it. it should look 
Yeah, no, thanks. We'll, we'll do our best. How do you approach that spread? I mean, when fixtures came out, Finlay, this looked, you know, you'd be hoping final pool game, you'd be looking for knockout spots, all of that. So is there any element of anti-climax about this? No, like we, like Pete said in our meeting there before, like we have a sold out, or I think it's sold out, is it sold out, yeah? Close, close, sold out uh, sports ground this Friday. And um, I know, we, you know, the last time we were in a Champions Cup game at home, we didn't put our best foot forward. So we really want to, go out and put a performance that we can be proud of and we had some good stuff in that Munster game and gave the crowd something to cheer for and we'll be looking to do that again this Friday and it's yeah it's just business it's a while as well since Connacht had a win in the Champions Cup so yeah exactly like there's always plenty to play for and um you know lads are chomping at a bit to play like this these games are the you know Champions Cup rugby is the you know, is the best competition in, in club rugby so lads are chomping at a bit we're aware that we haven't achieve what we want to achieve but you know there's still an opportunity on Friday to make a statement and um, yeah against Bristol who are a quality side too. You're the weekend not just to look at Connacht but I presume you were looking at all the other teams and particularly French front row that you're going to be facing in, in two weeks time so uh, you played against France la for the last two years in the Six yeah. Nations so Marseille this time? Yeah a bit different than Paris but uh, definitely not too different the way the French boys play like they're um, some big boys in the pack, they love the scrum, but then on top of that as well, they're all dynamic carriers around the pitch. You know, lots of them go for poachers, so they have the full bag of sweets, everything they can do, they're, they're all unbelievable athletes, and uh, yeah, just watching them on the weekend reinforce that for me. I know we asked you after the World Cup, you came back saying you had good World Cup. In between, has that kept pushing on? You, you know, what sort of impact are you hoping to make to Six Nations? I oh, look, hopefully you get picked first, and then um, I know there's a bit of training week before that, and then just put my best foot forward, and. Uh, just, just like always, just take it one day at a time, and um, just give it, give it, give it my all, and give it my best is, is all you can do, really. Friday first season, though, I think. Yeah. You know what the Bristol front row is going to be like for the. Yeah, like they're probably, I think Sinks, Sinks right will be there. Yeah, yeah. So they, they have some real experience up there as well. Like I think Thack is back from from injury as well, and he's a really experienced guy for them too. So Jack Wilmore's there as well, Lucy Prop and. Um, Max Heath, like they have a lot of experience. Maybe a huge amount to play for since Sarri was just beaten last night. I mean, they've, they're mm. sort of back in the hunt for Anthony Cook. Yeah, they're in the mixer, so they're certainly going to be coming here with a with a point to prove in this competition, and uh, we certainly have a point to prove. So, uh, makes all the ingredients for fireworks on Friday. Let's look at it. And thank you very much. Beyond. Yeah, <laughs> thank you very much, man. Finley, when you think of Peg Lamb and the time you spent with him, what 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 stands out for you? Oh, look, he was a uh, Incredible coach when he was here, but on top of that, he was a uh, he was a really good bloke as well. Um, I don't think there's a few of us, and I'd say there's a few lads in every team he's coached that you wouldn't be where you are now with, without someone like him. And I'm certainly one of those people. You know, he took a, a shine to me when when I was a young lad running around the academy, probably at 103 kilos, and saw something in me and and backed me. And um, I'll always be thankful for what he's done for me personally to help grow my game and. Um, and I know he's since moved on, but look, I keep in touch with him the odd time. I had him at my wedding, and he's certainly been an influential character in my career, and certainly lots of other boys' careers as well. And, and when he, the fact that he's coming over here as you know, as obviously a, a, a pleasing coach, I mean, how how do you feel about that? Especially when you've got say the likes of JT and Marmion coming back and people like that, you just you just blank it out, or do you have the chat afterwards? Yeah, no, like yeah, there might be a bit of chat in the pitch, but nothing mental. Um, catch up with them afterwards and I think I'm due to go for breakfast with Kieran on Saturday. We'd be, Kieran and I'd be pretty tight, like real good mates and uh, he was best man, not best man, apologies, he was uh, groomsman at my wedding and uh, so yeah, I'll catch up with little Kieran on Saturday. He's a little mouse. <laughs> but uh, other than that, uh, yeah, it's just, no, nah, no, no. He's a little mouse. <laughs> but uh, sorry, that's, he'd get the joke if he was watching. Um, he's a, uh, yeah, he's a, a lot of good mates there, and but like I said before, it's just business when you get on the pitch, and mm. afterwards you have a good catch up and a, and a good laugh and a good yarn, so it's all good. How's, how important is it to actually beat Bristol, though, with all those with all the personalities involved and everything, and, and given where you are now in the Champions Cup? Oh, it's massive for us to beat Bristol. We, you know, we win this weekend. I think it's with five points. Uh, we go back into the Challenge Cup. So look, we don't want to be dead and buried in Europe by any means. We want to keep pushing for silverware and. Um, Look, it's a home game for us. It's a sold-out sports ground, hopefully. 
by Friday no and no pressure. And then uh, hopefully we'll have a full crowd cheering us on and we can give them something to cheer about because I don't think there's a game at Sports Ground for a, a good while off that. So hopefully give the crowd something to cheer on for and then do, do ourselves proud. I presume that adds to the occasion, the fact that it is just... Yeah, I think, yeah, it's a good storyline with the game and like with all the returning faces and people that have done a lot for, for our club and then they're coming back. So, look, we're aware of that, but like I said, it's just business and mm. lads have got their head screwed on straight away coming in today. Everyone's focused for, for Friday night and doing everything they can to get the win and look, it's going to be an exciting game, but it's just business. So. Yeah, there's a lot riding for both sides, isn't there? Yeah, exactly. There's a, yeah, yeah, put the storyline of the boys coming back, then two teams, a lot to play for. It's, what rugby's about, so should be a good crack.